Praise the Lord, friends, and welcome to our broadcast. I'm so glad that you've tuned in. You need to tell your friends to tune into this broadcast. Praise God. We got some great things that we're going to be sharing. I'm actually going to be sharing today from the book of Daniel, chapter 7, when Daniel had a vision of four beasts. Now, I believe these beasts represent the Gentile empires of the world, really, that will stand against Israel from Daniel's time clear through the end of times. And um, we're going to see some things. I, I believe it's so powerful. Um, but in Daniel chapter 7, we'll begin reading this verse, and then we're going to go talk about some of these things. We're going to read the first 14 verses, but we may stop early. But it says, in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream. So Daniel actually reigned under four different kings. He reigned under Nebuchadnezzar and then Belshazzar for a very short period of time, kings of Babylon. The Babylonian empire was the third in a list of nations to oppress Israel. First it was Egypt, then it was Assyria, then it was Babylon, then it was Media Persia, then it was Greece, and then it was Rome, and finally revised Rome, which we'll talk about in the last time. So he, he, Daniel was serving. Now, Daniel was a really unique person in that Daniel served under uh, four different world leaders in two different empires. You could look at it as three because he, he served not on, only under Nebuchadnezzar and Belshazzar in the Babylonian Empire. He served under Darius the Mede and under Cyrus the Persian in the Media Persian Empire. So we could put those together as one, or you could say there was the Media and, and Persian Empire. But anyway, that was the greatest, largest empire to ever be in the, in the world. Now, he said, he saw this, he had this vision of, in his head, a dream, uh, while he was on his bed, and he wrote the dream in the sum of the matters. Daniel spoke and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of heaven strove upon the great sea. Now, the sea, biblically, when we study Bible prophecy, speaks of the Gentile nations of the world. And we're going to see some things, if we have time today, uh, for sure by tomorrow we'll see some things, talking about this great sea. And four great beasts came, upon, came up from the sea, the Gentile nations of the world, different, diverse from one another. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the e wings thereof were plucked and it was lifted up from the earth and made to stand upon the feet as a man and a man's heart was given to it. Now, I believe this first beast that Daniel sees represents the Babylonian empire. He says then another beast, a second, came like a bear and it raised itself up on one side and it had three ribs in the mouth between its teeth. And they said, arise and devour much flesh. That bear represented the media Persian empire. Now, I'm teaching this week on the dragon, the bear, the beast, and the king. Now, we know the dragon is the devil, according to Revelation, right? Revelation chapter 20. We know that the beast is the antichrist. But who is the bear? I don't believe the bear is media Persian. The bear here... In Daniel's vision was media Persia. But I believe there's countries that still have that spirit of the bear. And notice what he said, arise and devour much flesh. And he says, and he had three ribs in his mouth. And then after that, I behold another, a leopard, and on the back of it, four wings of a fowl. So it moved into power very quickly. And the beast had four heads and dominion was given to it. I believe this is talking about the Grecian Empire, Alexander the Great. And he, if I'm correct, he had four generals under him, and he came into power very quickly, four wings. This leopard with wings flew into power very quickly. And this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly, and it had great iron teeth, and it devoured and broke in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Now, I believe this beast has to do with Roman Empire and the revised Roman Empire, which is where the Antichrist system, in my opinion, will come back into power uh, very strong. 
He said, I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. Now, these empires, let's talk about these empires. This book of Daniel was written about 530 years before Christ. So, the Babylonian Empire went from 612 to 539 years before Christ, about 70 years, right? And it went from Israel, if you go down south from Israel, along the uh, eastern side of the Red Sea, about halfway down, it went up north from Israel, and then it curved over and went over to the Persian Gulf, to the current area of Iraq, right, and Baghdad, right, that city. So that was the Babylonian Empire. That went from 612 to 539 years before Christ. Then from 539 to 338 B.C., about 200 years, we had the Media Persian Empire. That was the southwestern uh, part of Europe, Turkey uh, co going co to the east, and uh, actually all of southern Europe, uh, Turkey going to the east, down through the Mideast, clear over to the east side of India. The largest empire to ever be in the world, the Media Persian Empire, ruled over 127 different nations. When you read the book of Esther in the Old Testament, the Shidi, the king's wife, got rebellious. And so the people who were under King Ahasuerus, he was the one who was over the entire Media Persian Empire, 127 kingdoms said, hey, let's have a beauty contest. Let's find the fairest young virgin in the land, and she will become your wife since Vashidi doesn't know how to behave right. And so, you know, any fleshly king would probably like that, okay? So, you know, from, from the western end of the European, you know, empire from Britannia, clear across to the east side of India, clear down through the Middle East, right? This is where this media Persian empire went over Israel, over over the Middle East, over Iraq, over all those countries, and then back across the north side of Africa. That was the Media Persian Empire. And then the Grecian Empire went from 338 B.C. To, to about 44 B.C., about 290 years. And it was from the southwestern part of Europe over against Persia, kind of stood up against that. And uh, it was a little smaller empire, but it, it, it was a world empire that pressed Israel, and Alexander the Great was the head of it. Then, from 44 B.C. to 286 A.D., we see the Roman Empire about 320 years. That was from Britannia, right, southern Europe, all across Europe, all down across the Middle East, you know, over, over Turkey, over the Middle East, over Iraq, you know, and over Israel, and then back down around the Red Sea, over Egypt and northern Africa. Okay, so that was the Roman Empire. Now, I read a book about 30 years ago that a man named Finnis Dake wrote, right? It was called God's Plan for Man. In this book, Mr. Dake said that all these nations that were once part of the Roman Empire have to come under one head. He said for that to happen, the Iron Curtain has to come down. Now, he wrote that in 1964 and died. And then I read this in about 19, you know, 85 or 6. And, you know, and then in 1988, we watched them take down that Iron Curtain. In fact, I was in Dr. Lester Sumrall's church. I was studying as a Bible school student. I was working for the ministry. And um, in November of 1987, Dr. Sumrall prophesied, and he said, Communism is going to fall. And he was talking about Russia. We were at the height of the Cold War. It, you know, when he said that, it is like he poured ice water on about 2,500 or 3,000 people. It's like they sucked the air out of the room. And then, you know, we watched. We watched in 1988 as that wall was taken down. We watched it, saw it with our own eyes. He also said some other things while I was there. In late 1987, about November, 
He said in 1988, he said the high are going to be brought low and the low are going to be exalted. He said it will happen in the government and in the church. And we saw it happen. We watched it happen with our eyes. In fact, I remember there was a major Pentecostal leader and it came out in February of 1988 one of, on Sunday. One of the Bible school students that just loved this man, he was a good minister actually. He, he came to me and said, surely this isn't true. And I said, oh, yes, it was a sexual scandal. I said, it probably is. That's all he preaches about. And sometimes people preach trying to fix their self. And so anyway, if you've got problems, get help. Glory to God. And we're going to talk about some things because I believe there's some things happening right now in the church, and we need to be ready. Now, uh, in Daniel chapter 2, King Nebuchadnezzar, right, Belshazzar's father had a dream and he forgot the dream he could not remember the dream so he uh went to his wise men and they said king you're crazy you tell us the dream we'll interpret it he's like i can't tell you the dream i forgot it so daniel said hey because the, he was going to kill all the wise men daniel's living there as a foreign exchange student and said listen give me some time and my three hebrew friends will pray and god will come through god there's a god in heaven who reveals secrets and so God revealed this dream to Daniel in a night vision. He, he thanked and blessed the God of heaven. After God revealed that dream to Daniel, he went and told the king. He said, this is what you saw. You saw a great image, a statue, and it's had a head of gold and a breast and arms of silver and a belly and thighs of brass and legs of iron and feet of iron and clay. And you saw it until there was a stone that was cut without hands, you know, that hit the image, not in the head, but on the feet. And the image fell to the ground and the stone became a great mountain that filled the whole earth. Now we understand that now looking back, Daniel was prophesying of those Gentile empires of the world from that point in time towards the coming of Christ that would oppress Israel. And what are those Gentile nations? Babylon, you, you, O king, are the head of gold. Media Persia, the breast and arms of silver, the belly and thighs of brass, Greece, the legs of iron, eastern and western parts of Rome, the feet of iron and clay, revised Rome. Do you know, I believe that system is already in existence today. And then the stone that was cut without hands, Jesus is the stone that the builders rejected. It fell from heaven, hit the image on its feet, and the image fell to the ground, and the stone became a great mountain that filled the whole earth. Now, Daniel had a vision of these, and Daniel saw these same kingdoms. He said, before they, had, this is like news while it's happening and before it happens. You know, the Bible says that God does nothing except he first reveals it to his servants, the prophets. God reveals secrets to his servant, the prophets. Now, he said, Daniel 7, verse 9, I beheld till thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, his hair was and head were pure like wool, and his throne was a fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. The fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousands, a thousand thousands ministered to him. Millions, millions ministered to him. And 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him, hundreds of millions. And the judgment was set, and the books were open. I beheld, I saw, I looked then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spoke, I beheld till the beast, we know the beast is the Antichrist, and his body was destroyed and given to the burning flame. Oh, the Antichrist is going to be thrown in the fire just like the devil. As concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven came to the Ancient of Days, came to the Father of God, and they brought him near before him. And there was given to him dominion and glory and a kingdom and all people and nations and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom is that which shall not be destroyed. So Daniel saw the same thing again, that the king had a vision, and, and then Daniel, God revealed the dream to Daniel and his his Hebrew friends, three Hebrew friends, and, and Daniel interpreted it to the king. This is what this means. And, and so then Daniel had this vision. And did you know what? He, he saw the, the Gentile empires of the world. Now, 
What does all that mean to us? Because that's what I, I really want to know. You know, Bible prophecy does us very little good unless we really understand there's some things that we need to do. So I want to turn to 2 Thessalonians 2. The writer of Thessalonians, the Apostle Paul, is also very prophetic. Sometimes when we teach Bible prophecy, people say, well, that isn't New Testament. Well, I was in Revelation. That's New Testament. Now we're going to be in 2 Thessalonians. That's New Testament. 2 Peter has a lot of prophecy in it. That's New Testament. Timothy has prophecy in it. That's New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John have prophecy in them. That's New Testament. So there's a lot of stuff in the New Testament that we, we ought to read. Now, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, we read in verse 1, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together by him. Jesus is going to come, and he's going to get us. We're going to gather with him. That you do not be shaken in mind, <coughs> excuse me, or trouble, neither by spirit or word, nor by letter as from us, that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day will not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin will be revealed the son of perdition. There will be a falling away before Christ comes. Who opposes and exalts himself. Now, don't be despair. Don't be discouraged because there's not only a falling away. There is also a great revival. And I'm going to talk about these things that are happening on the earth today. But he says there's going to be a falling away before the Antichrist comes, the man of sin, the son of judgment, who opposes and exalts himself against all that is called God. There are things happening now in world and in world governments where people are mocking God. He says, so that he is God sits in the temple showing himself that he is God. Remember not that when I was with you, I told you these things. Now, you know what withholds. We read this yesterday. What is restraining? What is holding back the Antichrist? The church. The church is the salt of the earth. The church is the light of the world. Did you know Israel in the Old Testament was a type of the church? Did you know as long as Israel was not backslidden or removed from their land, no foreign nation could overtake them? And as long as the church is standing strong and shining bright, if we are not backslidden or removed, the Antichrist will not be able to take over the world. Now, he's trying. And the spirit of Antichrist is here on the earth, been here for 2,000 years. And the system of the Antichrist is quickly being set up. I'm going to show you some things today or in tomorrow's broadcast, depending how far we get. And I want to tell you it's dangerously close. And you need to watch and you need to be aware because you don't want to give in to the Antichrist. He says, the church is withholding that that's, the Antichrist might be revealed in his time. I'm interpreting 2 Thessalonians 2 verse 6. For the mystery of lawlessness does already work. Only he who restrains will restrain until he be taken out of the way. Jesus is going to come get the church. And then that wicked one will be revealed whom the Lord will consume with the spirit of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. Now, did you know Satan is going to come with lying signs and wonders? And it talks about this in these next few verses. We're not going to read that today. But I want to talk to you again about what's happening. What do I think is happening today in the church? First of all, I think there is a polarization of good and of evil. In Matthew 24, Jesus talked about the end times. And listen to what Jesus said. In Matthew 24, verse 11, Matthew 24, verse 11, through verse 15, many false prophets will arise and deceive many. Now, I, I read that verse only to say this. We recently had a program at our church, and someone called in the week before our program, and they said, listen, we're going to... I am Jesus Christ, and I'm going to be coming to the program, and I'll be talking to your pastor. Well, <coughs> excuse me again. Whoever that was never came, never introduced themselves to me at least, but that just proves this scripture is right. He says, because iniquity shall abound. Sin abounds in the world. It's everywhere. If you don't watch, you'll get involved. Because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will wax cold. 
You're not red hot on fire for Jesus and then just serving the devil the next minute. You begin to go places in your mind. You begin to think about things. You, you begin to give the devil a stronghold in your mind. And you grow cold. You grow cold. But he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. Listen, we need to endure to the end. We need to keep walking in the things that we've been given. And this gospel of the kingdom, this good message of Jesus, shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations. Then shall the end come. So polarization. On one side, people are going into darkness and it's getting darker and darker. On the other side, there's a great revival on the earth. People of the church, the, the light is getting brighter. They're moving into the things of God. They're moving into the things of the Spirit. So polarization. The second thing I believe is happening in, in the current day that we live in, in the, in, in the church. What, what's happening spiritually? I believe there is separation. There's a separation between the good and the evil. There's a separation between the spiritual and the sensual. There's a separation between that which is truly of the spirit and that which is sensational. Good and evil. Spiritual and sensual. Right? What is truly of the spirit and what is sensational. Some things that people think are of the spirit are just sensationalism. They're not really of the spirit. And I believe there's a separation coming where you're going to clearly see what was good, what was evil, what was of the flesh, what was of the spirit, right? Of the flesh, of the spirit. What was of the senses and what was just sensual, spiritual or what was sensual. And what was the true move of the Holy Spirit or that, that which was just sensational. So I believe there's a separation coming. And I believe you're going to see these things more and more revealed. Now, the next thing I believe, what's happening I believe there is a polarization. I believe there is a separation. I believe there are manifestations of the Spirit. I wrote recently, my son asked me, what do you think is going to be happening during the next year in the church? And I, I said, I don't know. You're pretty prophetic. Why don't you speak to that? And he didn't give me anything. But later that evening, I sat down on the couch with my wife. And as I sat there, the Spirit of the Lord began to speak to me and said, right. And so I wrote. And, and this is some things that I wrote that... The lame will walk. We've seen that happen, and we're seeing those things happen. The deaf will hear. We've seen that happen, and we're seeing those things happen. We had a girl that was born deaf in our church that was healed last year during our camp meeting. Hallelujah. But we're going to see more manifestations of the Spirit. In the last days, the church is going to go out in power and in great glory. Hallelujah. So, so there's going to be that. There's going to be a se separation there's going to be manifestations. God said, in the last days, I'm going to pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. When we talk about separation, 2 Timothy 3 says this, in the last days, perilous, hard-pressed, difficult times shall come. Listen, I've talked to people, old people, young, nobody's ever seen times like this. Nobody can explain some of the crazy stuff that's going on. You know, it's It's crazy. And, you know, he says there will be people who have a form of godliness in verse 5, 2 Timothy 1, 3, verse 1, and then verse 5, through verse 5. You should read the whole thing. Praise God. In fact, we could go there really quickly, and we'll just read it really quickly for it. Because I believe these things are happening in the days in which we live, and, and I believe that we need to stand strong and shine bright for Jesus. This know that in the last days perilous, hard-pressed, difficult times shall come. For men will be lovers of their own self. They will be selfish, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to their parents, unthankful, and unholy, without natural affection. We see that happening. It's not normal, not natural. People will not keep their word truce breakers, false accusers. Being accused, you know, when you're, when you're doing right for doing wrong, incontinent, having no control over fleshly appetites and desires, fierce. Some people are just fierce. Despisers of those who are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Listen, there are people that have a form of godliness but they have no power. 
Andrew Womack used to say this, they're straight as a gun barrel, but twice as empty. <laughs> they don't have any power. We need the power of God. Now, I believe in living straight and living right and living pure, but I also believe in the power of God, and I believe we can walk in the power of God in the day that we live in. And so, praise God, this is our day, and we need to walk in the things that God has given us. So, when we, when we begin to understand these things, praise God. You know, what, 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 is, what is happening where we're living? What is happening in Bible prophecy? Well, I believe the Antichrist system is being set up. And I'm going to talk more about that tomorrow. And we want to be ready. I'm not looking for the Antichrist. But I am actually appalled at how many Christians are so deaf, dumb, and blind, spiritually speaking. It is crazy to me. And so we don't need to have our head in the sand like an ostrich, but we need to be watchful. We need to be vigilant, be sober, because our adversary, the devil, is walking about seeking whom he may devour. Last of all, I didn't get to this. I believe there's going to be great salvation. I believe many people are coming to Christ. The Bible says multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision before that great notable day of the Lord shall come. Friends, if you're watching this broadcast and you need prayer, if you need to receive Christ, if you need to get your life right with Christ, if you need to receive healing, if you need prayer, give us a call. We have trained prayer ministers waiting to, to receive your call. And I want to tell you a great big thanks to all our partners. If you want to be a partner with us, please give us a call. Thank you so much, and God bless you. Thanks for watching Praise for Today. This broadcast is made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000 or go to LawsonPurdue.com or write us at P.O. Box 63733, Colorado Springs, Colorado, 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.